All right, I must warn those people that are going to make stupid comments. You must watch the video completely before you make a comment. And I will delete stupid comments. Now, this crank organ I designed and built over 20 years ago. I wrote a booklet on how to build this thing step by step using modern materials. Okay? And then the, all the cranks out there, ah, it's not really an organ unless it's got pipes. Ah, you didn't use leather. You got to use leather. Ah, ah, ah. I've heard all your, uh, um, your emails. I've read them all. But in the end, 20 years ago, I built this. And I built it so a person that wanted to build a custom crank organ with modern materials could do it. It had nothing to do with older ones. And yes, there is a Cobb roller organ unit. It's huge. Okay, it was sold by Sears. I know all about that. I know all about the <laughs> Wurlitzers and all this other stuff that you could tell me about. Know all about it. Wanted to own something myself that could be stored in a closet. I didn't want a full-size merry-go-round that I would never finish, okay? That's where I'm at. Also, I wanted to create a really long booklet uh, on a project. And this is organ number three. This isn't just the first one, okay? Now, this thing is 20 years old. When you turn the crank, notice that this bellows is, is a reservoir, okay? Okay? It all works. 20 years later. Now, the bellows on the bottom, it's a rocking style. There's two bellows. Okay? And in these holes, there's a valve. It's a leather valve. Okay? You can read up on these stuff. Uh, a cob roll organ is probably the closest thing to this. Okay? But this is made out of gray PVC. Gray PVC arms. In the back here, okay, there are the valves. Cool, huh? And uh, it uses uh, reeds from a harmonica. That was the big breakthrough. Uh, you can buy uh, different types of reeds from like a, a, an accordion, and they're dual reeds. So that when the accordion's going in or out, uh, whichever direction, it's got valves in there or flaps. And uh, there's a reed going in one direction, and there's a reed when it goes the other way. So even though the accordion is going in or out, it's playing the same tone. But that reed is quite large. I have some of them. I cut them in half. But it hit me that maybe I could salvage a harmonica. And then when I went to the store, uh, they actually sold replacement reed, uh, reeds, not reeds, um, what would you call them? A reed assembly, of a blow and a draw. There's two types of reeds, okay, that go in a harmonica. The ones when you blow and the ones when you draw in. And there's different scales. And this is the, uh, the scale of C. There are no flats and there are no sharps. So all the songs on this that play have to have no flats or sharps. And there are a few songs. And they're usually harmonica songs. Now, the drum is like this. And these are actual staples. Okay, these are Sears staples from a staple and gun, reformed and tapped in there. Uh, you pre-drill a hole and uh, you tap in the, the, uh, the staple. Okay, there's a lot of workmanship in this. There's a lot of thought going into it. And uh, this, reed, this uh, drum drops into two little things. It's held in by gravity. Uh, before you put it in, though, you want to hook up your, your drive ring. And they, the reason I used O-rings was, uh, at the time I was building this, it was getting very hard to find worm gears. Or any kind of gear. Uh, you're talking like 60 bucks for a set of uh, gears for something like this. Now, when you turn this, this is going to be loud. It's probably going to distort. Uh, you need to get a new microphone. It's distorting. Uh, uh.
play this for people, they lose their mind, okay, because it's really, really loud. And I want to go through some of the things that I was told by those experts. Uh, uh, using, using, let's see, using, uh, using canvas. It won't hold up. 20 years old. I use canvas. Now, inside, on the back side of this, is a cardboard um, stiffener as a triangle. And it helps, it helps keep this when it opens and closes uh, tucked in here. Okay. And then uh, this is this reason it looks a little bit orange or yellow. That's the contact cement that's bled through from holding the cardboard's um, stiffener in there. Then after you get it all done, okay, uh, use contact cement. And there is a board that comes out of here. These bellows assemblies come out. And there's a soundboard up in here. Okay, and then the reed, there's a reed plate assembly. And uh, after you get this done, you, you take a skim coat of RTV, silicon caulking, and your coat. And this is airtight. And as you can see, or as you could hear, it had a lot of power to it. Okay, now, back there, see that? This is a relief valve on the reserve. So as it, oh, I got to turn this off. Okay, as you crank it. It'll come up, and when it has too much air, the valve will, will open and let, let the excess air out. Okay? Now, like I said, there's a thing called a cob roller organ. But I started building a booklet way before anybody ever told me about a cob roller organ. And um, I basically came up with a design that's one-third the size of a cob roller organ. And the method to make your own music... It was all in the booklet, and I'm not selling the booklet anymore. Okay? Because I had so much problem with people. Uh, I can't make some of the parts. you got to make the parts for me. Can you, make a, can you make an organ for me? I don't have the time. I, it just went on and on and on. Because you're talking about old men that are retired, which I'm at that point now. And they make shit up in their head. They're like one, they're one sandwich short of picnic. Uh, they're basically starting to go senile and they contact you and they want you to stop everything you're doing uh, to basically make a drum with a song for their wife for their wedding anniversary. They don't have the machine finished, but they want you to make the drum up. So I guess at the, at the um, anniversary dinner, he presents her with the drum because he's never going to build the machine. But this is three years worth of work every day working on this. Uh, doing the drawings, uh, illustrations to how to build this thing. This is the most labor-intensive project I ever built from beginning to end. And this is machine number three, okay? The first machine, it used separate, um, uh, it, it had separate, um, what would you call it, disc for each note, uh, strung out on a thing. And this, this actual piece of PVC pipe, is from computer store Frank's backyard. This is the PVC pipe he asked me to get rid of when I was mowing his lawn. And I was holding it in my hand. He goes, you're going to make something out of it. And I did. I made this, this uh, the drums for this organ. And I, I, have three, I have three drums. I have three separate songs I did. I didn't stop it. Thanks. So in other words, uh, the set of plans had three different songs. Okay. But I got a lot of people. They wanted a custom song done. And uh, they're not going to build the machine. See, I caught on to that. I'm like, well, when are you going to finish? Oh, I'll get to the machine. I just need the custom drum. I'm like, no, no. You finish the machine. And I'll put the music on the drum for you. But I want pictures of the machine so I can show people that someone finished it. Never happened. Okay? But the big breakthrough in with this machine was it's built out of PVC plastic, gray PVC plastic, quarter inch thick okay it uses pulley system for reduction of speed with o-rings let me pop this off i don't leave leaving it on too long and uh, instead of gears okay it used a harmonica reed set instead of um harmo or, or, or accordion reeds or any other type of reeds that you can locate out of some type of uh miniature uh, organ now that the experts ah it's not organ less or less pipes I went through all that. 
ah, you got to use leather. You can't use you can't use canvas that's coated. And then other guys are you got to use raincoats. Raincoats work the best. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these were men uh, in the groups that never finished anything. And like I said, I always figured that out after a while. And then um, the guys kept saying, oh, if I can only get a player piano and work on it, blah, blah, blah. And one guy called their bluff one time. He says, all right, I'm in the process of moving. I have three restored player pianos. They go to the first three people that come over to the house and take them away for free. Player pianos that are restored, sitting there. All you have to do is come over, put your name on it, get a moving truck, and take the player pianos away. All right, you know what happened to those player pianos? They were broken up into pieces and thrown away in a dumpster. Because all those big talkers, oh, I'm trying to locate a player piano. I'm going to restore it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Guy goes, here. Three of them are finished. Uh, anybody want them? Nobody wanted them. And then you got the guys at the reality. I got six of them. Nobody wants them. I had one restored. When the relatives come over to the house and I put it on, uh, they want to run out of the, out of the room because they're loud. Player piano plays uh, chords, a bunch of keys at one time that a human being could never hit. So it's really loud. It's annoying. There's no uh, real good ones have slight variation in the, the hammer, but most of the time it's just whacking away at the um, at the string. It's basically plays marches. Now, some people will cry. Oh, the one I have, it, it, it can play softly. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, player pianos are instruments of old men. And I joined the group and I got the, the worst of old men. You know, tell me this won't work. That won't work. Well, it does work. And here's the book. And I had the booklet and I was selling the booklet. I had three dealers that were selling the booklet for me. One died. One was mentally ill and was on um, lithium. And all he did was take orders and never tell me that he took an order and the person would never get their booklet. I had to straighten that all out. I got banned from uh, the uh, coach library system because of that guy. And uh, the one woman did very good. She sold my booklets for me. But it was a dying thing. Uh, a lot of people, when they realized they couldn't fit a player piano in their house, uh, would buy the plans for my machine and just look at the pages. And a lot of them would tell me that. they said, I just wanted to see, you know, what was inside, what was involved. And I'm like hoping somebody would build this thing. Okay. So for 20 years, I sold the plans and not one, pe one person finished it. And it's amazing. You know, you, I tried to make it as simple as possible. Uh, you, you turn the circle, these pulleys you actually make on a drill press. Uh, you, you first, first you uh, you turn them down. You cut them out with a scroll saw, and then you, you have a pivot point. And you rotate them, and you can use a sanding drum. Uh, several ways, like a milling bit or a, a belt sander to make them round. And then by hand, you 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 file in a a, a gully for the for the uh, O-ring. You know, all the parts that can be all handmade. And I did these parts by hand. I didn't use a metal lathe. Even this. This, on the on this drum, you can see this gully here for the O-ring. That's been turned. That's been done by hand. But it doesn't matter how simple you make anything. Even if you put out a, a kit, there are certain people that will open the box for the kit. They'll hold the pieces in their hand, put it back in a box, and it'll go up in a shelf somewhere. And once you learn that, okay, and there's a small percentage, very small percentage of person that'll say, I'm going to build this project. Because it's beyond me. I'm not going to be able to design one. I'm going to build yours. And they'll build it. And that, that's what was happening with the CNC machine. I used to call those people one percenters. Now with this this machine here, here hitting all the levers. Uh, this machine here, nobody finished it. Okay. And I sold hundreds of sets of plants. And it's not that it's hard to do. Okay. It's just that. People are bullshit, okay? And you say, well, I build stuff. I finish it. Go look at my website. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. You do. You finish a couple things. Then I go look, and it's um, moronic stuff, okay? It's, it's, it's not soldered nicely. And wires hanging out all over the place. Yeah, there are some really incredible people on YouTube. But it seems to be older YouTube videos. They don't seem to be as many of those guys around anymore, okay? It's like... Uh, us craftsmen are a dying art, okay? But the reason 
I built this back in 2000. Uh, I had ran a bulletin board system and uh, I wanted to get away from computers for a while. And of course I used, uh, it was T-Paint originally and Microsoft Paint. And uh, I used it to do all my drawings, all my illustrations. And uh, I, could, I can really do an illustration really fast in Microsoft Paint. I can also do it uh, freehand, do a drawing. Uh, I can't draw people though. But I just wanted to show you that and maybe, uh, you know, get some of you guys excited. I know last time I did this video on the old uh, system, ah, your mic is bad. I guarantee you that this uh, distorted the, the, the mic and the camera. This is loud. This thing is annoyingly loud. And all those guys, you won't get enough pressure. You won't, they're all wrong. They're just shooting from there, making stuff up. And there I am doing all these tests, making a set of bellows, and then a real, a good harmonica, uh, a $10 one, <laughs> uh, doesn't take that much air to make the reed move. It's, it's incredibly. And then, uh, you know, having the reserve, and this, this, is, this is a spring-loaded reserve. There's a spring on that. So in order for that to, to uh, fill up, fill up uh, it has to work against the spring, and that's where your pressure comes from. You got a relief valve for the pressure, but the, the amount of pressure is made by there's a spring that pulls this close, closed. Uh, so I, I think that's about it. All right, that's it.